Hey guys, Youngblood back with you, and today what I wanted to do is talk about the last of the new weapons, and that's going to be the uh, Kestrel, the Locust, and the Antares uh, for the respective uh, ESFs. Now, with this weapon, uh, if you guys don't recall, these are the ones that started out as wing-mounted weapons back uh, when they first were introduced and put on the test server, um, but were then reworked and decided that they fit a better role as a nose cannon. Um, so you, now you're choosing between your stock nose cannon, your rotary, or the uh, Locust, Antares, or Kestrel. Um, I'm going to refer to these as the Locust throughout this video because that's what they were originally named when they were the wing-mounted weapon, and it makes it just a little bit more simplistic for myself and my brain, which is uh, overworked as it is right now. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump in. With these weapons, they were designed to be more new pilot friendly. You've got a big magazine size on all of them. For example, the Reaver gets 95, the uh, Scythe gets 110, and the uh, Mosquito gets 150 bullets per magazine, and that's at the lowest tier. So that's a lot of bullets. They've got a decent rate of fire. So what, you, what these are actually designed to do is just put sustained fire downrange. Now, one thing you'll notice is they do have the bigger reticle, almost like the rotaries. That's actually exactly like the rotaries. So these do have quite a bit of spread. Now, you, you kind of counteract that benefit by just having more bullets going downrange, but um, it is worth noting that it's not going to be as pinpoint accurate as your uh, stock nose guns are. So the idea is newer pilots aren't going to have great aim, so it's going to supplement their uh, flying by allowing them to have more bullets that might hit the target. It's an interesting idea in theory. However, in practicality, it doesn't seem to work out that well for new pilots. One of the main issues is that they're just too expensive, especially for new pilots. You know, there are a thousand uh, certs right now, and for a new pilot, that's going to take a really long time to rack up, especially when in my mind, and I guess I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler here, the uh, stock nose gun is quite a bit better where it stands right now. So if I'm saying that the default nose gun is already better, what, what about the Locust is the main issue for them? And I think there's a couple different things, but ultimately it comes down to there's not a real role for the Locust where it really excels compared to some of the other options. Um, you know, it's got a really low bullet velocity. Um, you know, when we're talking about these, we're talking about 650 meters per second, unless the Scythe, which has a little bit higher at 700. The bullets don't travel that fast. Um, and it's, when you just look at the numbers, it's not a drastic difference between the two other nose guns, but it feels much worse than the number actually shows. Um, so you have to lead your target by a whole lot of range. So when you're talking about long distance, um, it doesn't really fit that role very well outside of the fact that you just have a whole bunch of bullets you can shoot and hope that some of those are landing and you can kind of adjust your stream as you're firing. Um, so the low bullet velocity um, makes it really struggle. It's got a long reload time. Obviously that's counteracted by the fact that it's got a really big magazine, um, but it is worth noting. And it's got a lower fire rate than most of the other weapons too. You know, combine that with the fact that they're they're really pretty expensive for what they are, and I just don't see a great a great place for these to fit in. So you know, let's kind of talk about the different you know engagement ranges that you really you know get involved with. So if we're talking about a long range engagement, um, you know, accuracy is important and bullet velocity is important, and based on the reticle and the low bullet velocity, neither one of these are a benefit to the locust. So you're going to have to really um, lead your target by quite a bit, especially if they're moving, um, to you know really make sure that you're landing most of your shots. And even then, the weapon itself is pretty inaccurate. So you're much better off using the stock nose gun. You know, at medium ranges, it's probably where it you know excels the most. But in in that situation, the rotary is going to typically be better, or the stock, just based on the damage output. Um, you know, you can make an argument that, you know, if aim is really troublesome and against some pilots that are maybe like to be stationary a little bit longer, you might have some better op opportunities to put damage on them with the Locust, but I, I haven't personally seen that from using it. Um, and then when you talk about close range, the rotary is always going to be better. You know, that high rate of fire, it gets a lot of damage on it quickly. It's got that fast reload. Um, Honestly, I really do just feel that the Locust Cannons are outclassed by the other two options when we're talking about just about every, you know, air engagement range. So, um, you know, it's moderately effective when you're talking about attacking ground targets, whether that be like harassers or lightnings. Um, you know, due to the new damage resistance types um, and what the nose guns actually do to those, none of them are real effective. So I, I don't want you guys to think that um, this is going to be your new tank buster uh, you know, for your ESF, because it's not. It's it's more, you know, it may be a little bit more effective. It's They're all kind of in that crappy category, but, um, you know, it is nice having the long, or the big magazine to continue to put bullets down, especially on, like, the pesky harassers. I find that pretty useful. Um, 
but I mean, realistically, don't expect this to be reinventing the wheel ver when you're talking about uh, attacking the ground. I don't really care for it when we're attacking infantry either. I'm, it's nice because you have a lot of bullets, and if somebody's kind of running and jumping around, it kind of gives you that, again, long stream, a lot of bullets, so, you know, sl you can get some slop shots on them. Uh, that being said, the big reticle, especially when you're in a little bit closer to the infantry, which is probably not the best place to be, but, um, you know, the stock nose gun and its pinpoint accuracy is going to give you a better shot of landing the tiny little shots on the, you know, little ants that are running around that are infantry, so... It's not bad for, you know, that sort of situation, but again, there's just better options. So, when we're talking about a weapon that is a thousand certs, it needs to really fit a good role. And right now, it, it, it just is... There's no ideal situations for it, so I don't think it's worth it. And that's kind of my final recommendation on it for you. I would not suggest getting this. Now, it is kind of a fun weapon to use. You know, there's something to be said for just holding down the trigger and going Rambo in your ESF and just throwing a bunch of bullets at your target. Um, however, it, it, it can be a frustrating experience at the same time. I can't remember who I was talking to through uh, chat during the game, but um, he summed it up perfectly and he said, using the nose, using the locust is like trying to smother your enemy with a pillow. And it's really apt because you will kind of feel that way when you use them. Um, but it, it's fun. It, it's kind of interesting. So if you're looking for a change of pace, it's kind of a fun gun to use. Um, I wouldn't pair this with anything anti-vehicle, I the rocket pods or the um, uh, Hornets, just because they're okay at air to air, but if you don't have either like coyote missiles or the afterburners to help you out, and that somebody comes up on you with a uh, rotary or even the stock nose gun, you might be in some trouble. So um, I, that's just kind of my recommendation. Unless you've got an air escort, I wouldn't be running this as an air to ground category. Now, if you wanted to throw this on and have like, um, you know, rocket pods and you had a couple air to air ESFs helping you out, then you may have a successful kit here. But individually, if you're out just flying around and hunting, I would leave the uh, anti ground stuff at home. Now, I feel like I've been ripping on these weapons, and I kind of have, just because I think they're too expensive for what they are, and they're not super effective. But there are a couple situations where the Locusts aren't really bad. Now, um, the first of which is if you come up on an unsuspecting ESF, and you have a, you know, a second or two where you can put a lot of your big magazine into them, it's really effective. Now, I realize that sounds r dumb as hell because it, it kind of is, really. But, you know, if you sneak up on them with a rotary, it's going to do, you know, the same thing. If you sneak up on anybody with any weapon, you're going to be able to do some damage. So, yes, I understand that's kind of a stupid comment, but it does. It puts a lot of damage on the target, and that's an effective situation. Um, it's a little bit more effective at hunting, you know, libs or galaxies, too. Um, you know, that they're bigger targets it's harder to miss you can engage them from long ranges and continue to just put constant damage on them that's a spot that i like actually using these for um and probably my favorite thing was when you're fighting in a group or you're finishing um you know, when you're fighting in a group or a big battle um it, this weapon kind of suits being the vulture i found i was killing off a lot of targets that were already damaged by other pilots um, and i was getting kills as a result i think it was just because when they had to reload, I was able to continue just spraying bullets, and while it doesn't do a ton of damage, when they're already hurt, you don't need to do a ton of damage. So in those types of situations, I think it's fine. That's really about it, though. So just to kind of recap, um, I wouldn't waste your certs unless you're wanting something just for fun. Um, where they stand right now, they're not effective enough to replace one of the other weapons um, on your nose gun. So there you have it. Uh, one last thing I wanted to address real quick. Um, somebody posted a uh, comment on one of my previous videos about these because, you know, the Hornets, I said, were not worthwhile. And then I came back and said the Coyotes are a little bit overpowered. And now I'm saying that these aren't strong enough. It, it This person thought that I was being too critical of the developers. And I think most of you understand that what I'm doing is I'm giving my opinions for you. Whether I think you guys should be spending your certs and hard-earned station cash or whatever on these weapons. Um, hopefully SOE kind of takes what I'm having to say and, um, you know, makes the adjustments like they've done in the past. Uh, that being said, I'm not trying to be critical or say that I don't appreciate them putting this out. Because obviously this is a lot of work for them to do. Um, and I love the fact that we're getting new content because that's what keeps the game fun and fresh. Um, I just think it's important that you guys understand where the weapons currently stand and whether it's worth your while. Not that I'm picking on SOE. I think most of you guys understand that, but I figured I would lay that out just to make sure everybody understands. So, 
that being said, um, some of the things that you can uh, look forward to seeing coming out soon um, are going to be, I'm going to talk about the engagement radar in probably the next video. Um, I'm also going to do some new updated uh, recommended full ESF builds now that we have new weapons and uh, you know the changes to the fighter. So um, kind of my overall recommended, my favorite builds um, for you guys to go out and try. Um, and then I got some requests with the new lock-on changes to actually do a, a new dodging lock-on missiles and evading that kind of stuff video. So um, I'll put one of those out as well. So um, just kind of a preview of what's coming up. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want more content, subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more. So thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you later. Take care.